Now, we're in the interim during um, this, um, this October now. Uh, uh, we're in a special session, which we'll talk about later. But So what have been the issues that you've been working on in this interim? I know we briefly chatted about food issues and food sustainability. That's been one of my main uh, areas of focus because I've had a career in the food industry, and so I've seen a lot of, of uh, the issues relating to local food and how much imported food we do. So I've been working on a series of bills that will Im hopefully encourage more local food production and more local food consumption. Some of them are aimed at agriculture, some of them are aimed at value-added food production. And uh, I'm hoping to put together what I'm currently calling a food security package, uh, which would be a package of hopefully maybe 10 or, or more bills some of which are contributed by other senators and, and reps and some by other organizations such as the Ulu Pono Initiative or the Farmers Union and they've all expressed uh, interest in joining forces. My idea is if we package it as a, uh, if we market it as a food package rather than a few individual bills it might get more support and I've had a really good response from everybody I've talked to about it so what I'm looking at is a series of non-controversial bills that either support farmers or encourage more value-added food production well we certainly have many acres hundreds if not thousands of acres that are currently fallow and are not being farmed mm -hmm. and these can be found across the state on all of the islands um, what can we do to get more of those in production? I, I know you've talked about supporting irrigation systems, maybe helping and assisting in distribution systems. Uh, what, what other things do you think we can do as a legislature or even uh, as uh, business people? Well, I think we can try to remove some of the obstacles that small farmers face in getting started. Um, some of them are, are legal obstacles. Uh, one of the ideas I have is to uh, allow people to sell raw milk and raw milk products so that people can make their own cheeses and yogurts in, uh, in a small dairy type of way. Uh, another bill is modeled after a bill that just passed California that they call the Cottage Food Bill, which means after passing certain uh, certain requirements, someone can make certain kinds of food in their home kitchen. It doesn't require necessarily a certified commercial kitchen to do things like make banana bread or cookies. It's, it's an ex these are examples of things that people are doing but under the table right now because it's not strictly legal. And I'd like to uh, make them legal so we can do them on a larger scale. Uh, the, the dairy thing is of particular interest to me because we import so much yogurt and cheese and there's such a potential for small dairies here mm -hmm. to make their own um, you know small batch cheeses and yogurts and, and not to mention milk itself anytime you're talking about food or food products however there is a certain degree of safety and standards that must be established mm -hmm. uh, you're suggesting that we have minimums so can thrive without too much government oversight or or cost for that matter I am suggesting less regulations I'm certainly not suggesting less safety right because ultimately a farmer or a food producer is going to be liable for what they produce and any any repercussions from that but when you talk about uh, something like raw raw milk for example um, in California, raw milk dairies are allowed to sell through regular channels of uh, distribution and, and retail. Now, a raw milk dairy has to be much, much cleaner than a regular dairy for its products to pass the inspection. So really, you're not sacrificing safety in any way. You're just recognizing that small farms and traditional ways of making foods still have value and as we look at certain more and more regulations coming down like the federal food safety and modernization act a lot of small farmers are very afraid of what that's going to do to them and i know many farmers who plan to simply quit farming when those regulations reach us so i i see those as laws that don't protect consumers 
they protect the largest agri-corporations. Mm -hmm. And I would like to support and protect small farmers mm -hmm. so we can buy foods from our neighbors, we can encourage our neighbors to be making food, and we can have a sustainable society. And let me disclose that you are a small businessman. Uh, you own two or three grocery stores on the Big Island. Yes. And I would guess that you are a strong supporter of the local farmer and sell many local products in your stores. I am, and we are. Yes, we've been working for about 10 years now on trying to increase the amount of local food that we have. We have a, a, a large array of, of local vendors, uh, both farmers and food producers. In our produce sections right now, we have 55 or 60 percent local food. We're very proud of that figure. What do you We're, sell the most of, if I may ask? Local food? Yes, uh, local food. Um, I would say lettuces and kale, greens mm -hmm. on the vegetable side. And seasonally, you know, we sell a lot of mango in the summer, citrus in the winter. Um, and dragon fruit's an up and coming, uh, an up and coming popular fruit. So the healthy fruits and vegetables, you have a lot of that. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Now there are certain things that really can't be grown in Hawaii or can't be easily grown in Hawaii, and that that may always be true. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it's learning to encourage people to use the things that are grown here, as well as I'm a strong believer in the value-added food production, so that we don't have to ship our potato chip money to a factory on the mainland. I mean, there's no reason we can't make potato chips here right. or iced tea. And we don't have to ship boxes for thousands of miles that are mostly just air and water while we're exporting our dollars. I believe we should support uh, value-added food manufacturing here in this state. And how many employees do you have? I have about 150 employees. We okay. currently have three locations of natural foods markets on the Big Island. So it's great that you are an employer and you're certainly contributing um, not only to the tax base of our state, but uh, I believe I'm doing certainly that. providing economic opportunities for our residents. So thank you very much for that. I'm very, very proud of that fact because we started from scratch and we created these 150 jobs and uh, I'm very proud of that. And beyond the people who work for us directly, of course, there are dozens of farms and a few food manufacturers for whom we're one of their main uh, outlets is not the main one. Okay. And